Hey folks, Scuffmaster79 coming at you with another video review. Uh, I haven't done one in quite a while, I think like two months, something like that. Uh, I've been very busy with uh, work and, you know, if that's what you want to call it. Um, I haven't had time to make a lot of videos, you know, I haven't been home a whole lot, so uh, I am home now and I am doing, you know, I have a couple more reviews set for, you know, following weeks and whatnot. Um, but something that I have not seen a video on yet, uh, or a video review, rather, uh, is the Robot Damashi Zaku 2. Uh, I did get this, uh, like, two weeks ago, something like that. I had it on pre-order with ToyArena.com. Uh, I'll put a link probably in the description down there, and you guys can check that out. It's a pretty neat store. Uh, the prices are pretty good, and the customer service is, is flawless almost, you know. No, but nobody's perfect, but, you know, it's a good store, uh, you know. I'd have no problem suggesting them for your business. Anywho, uh, on to the actual review. This is the Robot Damashi Zaku 2. Um, it's a pretty neat figure. It's got a lot of the hard points, as they like to call it, so you can put all the different accessories and whatnot on them. Uh, they're not too unsightly. I mean, at first, it's a little hard to get used to. You know, seeing a whole bunch of little peg holes and stuff all over the figure. But it's really not that bad. I mean, it doesn't really bother me as much as, you know, I'm sure it would somebody else. You know, it all depends on your opinion. Uh, quickly, just, you know, right off the bat, I'll give you a size comparison to some other figures. Um, here he is next to the Zaku 2 version 2. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of more weapons on him and whatnot, so, um, you know, and he's a slightly different color. But you can see he's definitely, you know, slightly larger, a larger scale. Sorry, my tripod's a little squeaky. Anyway, um, Slightly, slightly different colors. Um, this is more cartoon accurate, I think, and this is, you know, just more, what I would say, uh, realistically colored, I guess. I don't know. But you can definitely tell this guy's a little bit more rounded off and bulkier. Uh, he doesn't have panel lining, which is a slight disappointment that I've noticed with a lot of the Robot Tamashi figures, uh, considering that they are Japanese, the, you know, the Japanese releases, since, you know, America's probably not going to be getting any sort of modern day Gundam figure releases over, you know, stateside. Um, it is a little disappointing to not see them being panel lined. Uh, you can do it yourself, obviously, which, you know, it's not too much too much work, but some people, you know, might not have the skill or want to actually panel line them. But, as you can see, like I said, he's slightly larger, more rounded out, uh, more cartoon accurate, I would say. Um, and, uh, let me loosen this up just a little bit so that way it's not so squeaky. Okay, there we go. Um, here he is next to a version 1. Just kind of move this guy over. The version 1 Zaku 2. You can see he is quite a bit larger. Nothing serious. I mean, if you if you collect MSIAs, you know, like me, if you're, if, you know, if you're like me and you collect mainly MSIAs, the Robot Tamashi figures aren't going to be too badly out of scale. I mean, it does. I know they are clearly out of scale, but it doesn't bother me. Um... You know, as much as some people, like I said, some people I imagine it could bother them quite a bit. But, you know, it doesn't bother me. They're more detailed and they're more modern, so it, it's not really a concern. Um, he's pretty much the same colors. You know, light green, dark green, gray, pink for the mono eye, all that. And just go ahead and set him aside. And in case any of you are wondering, yes, he is in scale with the Robot Tamashi Gundam. Here he is next to the Gundam. You can see they're about... About the same height, not too much of a difference there. Um, definitely in scale, I would say, because the Zaku's are always more bulkier and you know, thicker, you know, and more rounded edges, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely cool. Um, sorry about my tripod again; very squeaky for some reason. He does come with a large plethora of accessories. Um, instead of just going through and showing them all to you. Uh, which, you know, I, I can. I'll just save some time here. Because I had another review filmed, and I just ended up talking through most of it about stupid things. So, here's his tray that he comes boxed in. You know, obviously the figure is in there. He comes with the little spikes to put on the on his extra shield uh, that can make it like a punch shield or similar to the Zaku 2 um, seen in, uh, you know, like here. You can see he's got the three spikes there, similar to... Uh, 8th MS team. Uh, comes with, also, he comes with the spare shield and shoulder spike armor. 
Uh, this device here holds a the drum magazine down here. I'll, I'll demonstrate it then. And the rocket launcher, and then it has some hard points on it so you can store a whole bunch of stuff. This is the handle that you attach to the shield here so that you can use it as the punch shield, similar to uh, what came with the Zaku 1 MSIA figure. Uh, these are all the extra hands. He's got two left and right trigger finger hands, uh, left and right open palm kind of hands, and then left and right beam saber hands. And uh, in the package, he's packaged with the two you know, solid fists. He comes with two of the cracker grenades, and this is the little holder for them. They can go on either side, and it you know, attaches to any of the hard points. Uh, here are the leg-mounted uh, missile pods here. Uh, his Heat Hawk, which is, I think is pretty neat because it's got the solid gray blade rather than the activated yellow one. So if you have it stored on his hip, it doesn't look like it's activated. Uh, this is the little holder for the Heat Hawk, and these are the two holders for the Panzerfaust here. Pretty neat. A little delicate, I would, you know, I've messed around with them, they feel a little delicate. Uh, the Zaku Bazooka and the Zaku machine gun. So that's all of his accessories there. Um, he does come with quite a bit of his accessories actually. I think this is probably maybe other than the extended uh, probably the most weaponry that's ever come with a single Zaku figure. Not including the add-on kit that you can get for the Zaku 2 version 2 um, from the that magazine offer or whatever. Uh, I think I did a review. The Dengeki Hobby magazine add-on kit. I did a review of that. Um, I'll post like a little link somewhere right here so you guys can check that out if you'd like. Um, anyway, I'll go through real quick and just kind of show you his basic articulation. Uh, he is quite articulated, not as much as I would have expected though, coming from a Robot Damashi figure, uh, given their nature to be incredibly articulated. Uh, he's got a double ball joint, one that's up in his neck that goes down like from his the top of his head here into his neck, and then a separate ball joint that goes from you know the neck down to the torso so he's got quite a bit of movement that you can get going on there like that and uh, the top of the head here does come off and you can see the insides of the head and you can move the little mono eye around that's a little stiff on mine because it's brand new but still a neat little feature uh, one thing I would have liked to see was an extra like dome here that you can put on that had the commander horn on it that would have been neat um, I'm hoping that with the inevitable Shars recolor that they're gonna, I'm, I know that they're gonna release is probably gonna be some sort of exclusive. Maybe it'll come with, you know, an extra uh, dome for the, for, uh, you know, the original color Zaku 2, which would be neat to see. But if not, it's not a huge disappointment. Just something, you know, I thought of. Um, the shoulders are both the same on each side. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the shield off so you can see here. Uh, it's got a ball joint that goes into the torso like that, and then that's also on a swivel. So he's got quite a large range of motion here on his shoulders. Probably the best of any uh, of the Zaku action figures. Got 360 degree movement and everything. Uh, the biceps are also on a swivel. He's got a double jointed elbow, which gives him a very good range of movement here. Like so. And uh, just pretty much, you know, a very good range of motion in the arms, because Zakus are usually known for, in action figure form, for not having very good articulation in the arms due to the way it's designed. Um, it does have the hard point here that you can attach a shield to. Uh, the shield is on a tiny little swivel there, if that'll focus. So you can just go ahead and plug that in right in there. You've got a good range of motion. It stays on pretty tight. I mean, you got to considerably pull it. And most times, this little connector comes on off first. Uh, you actually take this off. I'll go ahead and show you that to you now. Um, and you plug this little handle in. Plug it in right there. And then you take the little spikes he comes with, plug them in at the top of the shield here, and then you got the punch shield. Go ahead and give him his his hands, uh, you know, two separate hands that actually work. Let's see here. Go ahead and plug one of his trigger figure hands in here. If I can get these to plug in. That's another complaint that, you know, well, not really a complaint, just something I've noticed. It's very difficult on a lot of the Robot Damashi figures to switch out the hands, especially when they're brand new. Because they, they're on these tiny little, I'll go ahead and show you now. Um, they're on this tiny little ball hinge joint that can move around, which and then the hand itself is actually on a tiny ball joint, so it's kind of a pain to get the hands on there. There we go. Oh, never mind. Hold on. There we go. So yeah, he's got quite a range of motion in the wrist. Uh, it's got a hard point underneath his arm there as well. 
So I'll just see if I can't get these hands on him then. Forgive me for my lack of aptitude with my hands. Oh. Not only the Zaku's, but mine. Okay, here we go. Just go ahead and plug that in. If I can. Okay. Wait, no. Alright, finally. I promise. Hopefully. Okay. So, here he is with his, uh, his new hands on, and... I almost guarantee that this is going. His hand is going to fall off here. Oh, maybe not. So yeah, you can just kind of hold on to that like a punch shield, similar to the Zaku One figure that had one. So we can punch you right in the face with a big spiky shield. Um, Going to take that off. Plug this back in. And uh, like I said before, with the punch shield here, you can take these off. At least this is what I, you know, like to like to imagine. Take that off, and you can plug it in right here, and that kind of looks like the Zaku 2 shield from uh, uh, what was it? Eighth MS team. Sorry, this is my train of thought here. Anyway, back to the articulation. Uh, he has a ball joint in the torso here. You can kind of see you got a little bit of movement, not a whole lot because these. It's similar to the uh, Eighth MS team Goof Custom, uh, where the the backpack uh, tubes kind of inhibited the, the movement of the torso. I mean, it's got a good range of movement for what it's worth, but, I mean, you're not going to get a whole lot of side-to-side -side waist movement, but definitely some, you know, angular poses with the torso. Um, all the skirt armor pieces are on tiny little hinges. Um, they're not necessarily ball joints. I mean, they're very tiny, but you're not going to get, like, a huge range of motion on them. Uh, the side ones here are on just a single swivel. Uh, the back part, the back skirt armor is just attached, but you know, you're not going to have to move the legs back that far anyway. Um, the legs themselves are on a ball hinge sort of joint that actually swivel at the thigh and uh, swivel at the waist piece here, you can see. So good range, you're going to get a good range of movement uh, out of the legs here. So, and they're very, not real overly tight, but they are nice tight joints, so you don't have to worry about uh, any difficulties with posing him. Uh, he does have double jo double jointed knees here. You can see quite a range of movement there. Uh, and double jointed ankles. You can see there's a tiny little ball joint in there, then there's a tiny ball joint attached to the actual foot. So you got a good range of motion here. And uh, these are actually aren't technically plugged in. They just kind of store like in this little groove here to allow for it to swivel more easy, easily rather, uh, for when you are doing it doing dynamic poses and such. Uh, that's pretty much the articulation for the guy. Uh, like I said, I'll show you all the weapons quickly. Uh, we got the uh, machine gun here. This little thing swivels. This comes off, obviously. Go ahead and give this to him. And there goes his hand. Go ahead and plug that back in. One thing I do like about this Zaku machine gun is that the stock is actually very a lot smaller. And, uh, therefore more easy to you know pose him with instead of having the giant you know like the Zaku one how he's got the giant stock on the uh, machine gun there so it's very easy to pose like that uh, show you his rocket launcher quickly um, get this to focus there we go uh, rocket launcher the scope is not independently uh, articulated from the front so if you move the handle it is on a swivel the scope moves with it. it. Does have a hard point, a male and female end here, and uh, it's pretty detailed. You know, normal sized compared to a Zaku. And two Panzerfaust here. You know, pretty standard. Should look like any normal Panzerfaust that have come with any of the figures. Um, they do come with the two little holders that you can attach to various points on them, which I'm not going to bother showing because I'm sure you all have can you know guess what that looks like. The Heat Hawk here, which is a little thin. But I, I do like the size of the blade compared to the figure. Um, would have ni been nice if they gave it a little bit more detail, like painting this. Um, but as I said, uh, the blade is gray, which looks like it is deactivated, which is pretty neat. 
would have been neat to see if you could have a interchangeable blade where this whole section pops off and they can switch it between a gray and like a see-through yellow one. Um, that would have been pretty neat. Uh, it does come with a little holder here, which this just slides into. You can see it's a little hexagonal shape in there. So that just kind of slides into there. And then you can attach it to his side here. Like so. And then he's got his nice heat hot going on there. Uh, let's see what else. He's got the two missile pods. Um, they aren't painted or anything. They're just solid gray plastic, which is okay with me. Uh, you can attach them to the sides of the legs. I've seen people, or pictures rather, uh, of them attached to the shields here, which looks pretty neat. But personally, I just prefer them attached to the sides of the legs here. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug all these in here. There you go. And uh, he comes with the two cracker grenades, as I had said before. You know, fairly detailed, just little tiny pieces of plastic, I guess. And uh, I'll show you this this big weapon attachment thingy. I'm not sure where the best place to attach it is. I mean, you can attach it to his backpack, but then it just kind of like hangs off, and you can't really get it in here without um, inhibiting the movement of the, the backpack torso thingy. So just. Uh, it only comes with one magazine for the ma uh, for the uh, machine gun too, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, that just kind of slides in there, and then you take this here, and this is on like a clicky joint thingy, and then it just slides back up and holds it in place like so. It's a pretty neat idea. I mean, it's not nothing bad, but it's a little a little bit too big, if you ask me. Um, so, but maybe that's just me. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I and mean, there's not a whole lot to go over. It's a pretty simple figure. Um, the Robot Damashi Zaku 2. Uh, if you like them, get them. If not, then you can skip them. But personally, if you're a 0079 fan like me, and uh, you do collect MSIs, this isn't a figure that you're going to want to miss. Uh, he does come with, or, or he will be, uh, or later in the line there will be re uh, releasing him Jell Attack Tank. It is a little bit more expensive, but... Uh, it comes with some parts to make like a Zaku tank and whatnot, which should be really cool. And I'll definitely be picking that up. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave it in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them. Um, sorry I couldn't go into like real specific detail with everything, but you know, time limits have me a little bit restrained. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for not being around for a while. Um, you know, like I said, I've been busy. And in case any of you are wondering, it does just have the standard uh, Robot Tamashi looking box here. Got a nice picture of on the front. And on the back just shows a bunch of details, shows all his weapons and stuff. So yeah, that's about it. It's the Robot Damashi Zaku. Once again, here he is next to the Robot Damashi Gundam. And for all you other fans, next to the Zaku 2 version 1. So if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments, like I said. Uh, thanks for watching, and subscribe if you like my videos. Until next time, see you later.